Privacy lets you shop online using virtual cards instead of your real ones. They help you protect your personal information. So, if you don't want to get scammed, head over to privacy.com slash Nick White and you'll automatically get $5 credited to your account. We've all been there. We build our first website or mobile app and we immediately start looking for ways to monetize our new skill, which seems easy enough if you have a college degree or prior work experience. But what if you don't? What are the options when it comes to making money from programming with no credibility whatsoever? Sooner or later, you're going to find this thing called freelance programming, and you're going to want to do it, but you might not really even understand what it is. Being a freelance programmer means you get to work on a whole bunch of different projects, whether it's for companies or just people. And sometimes you might even be able to work at a few companies at the same time. But how is that possible? Well, it's because you're not really an employee. You're just contracted to do some work, and when the contract's over, you move on to your next project. It sounds cool, right? You get to run around doing whatever you want, working wherever you want. But wait a second. How do you get started? How do you get these contracts? Recently, I've been seeing other videos and articles, and it seems to me that people have misconceptions about freelance programming. And I feel like a pretty good voice on this topic just because I have so much freelance programming experience, and I was able to make good money, meaning $50 an hour plus from freelance programming, which is probably what people want to make. And it's confusing, right? To get clients, unless your parents are rich and they have rich friends who all own businesses that need software to operate, but that's probably a pretty rare case. And you're probably just a regular person like me trying to make some money from a skill you have. So do you just get on your phone and start calling local restaurants and coffee shops, asking them if they need a website? Well, you could, but that's probably going to be just as effective as opening up a phone book and cold calling random people to find a relationship. If you really wanna find a relationship, you need to go out, meet people, maybe meet someone through mutual friends, or as an alternative, you could use a dating site. Or in this case, you could use a freelancing website. You know, because we're, we're not dating, we're freelancing. The only sites that I would recommend are Upwork, Fiverr, and People Per Hour. These sites are the most intuitive, they have great user interfaces, and actual projects. Whereas on other websites, there is a lot of scammers and spammers. Not to say you won't run into those kinds of people still, but it's less typical on the websites I just listed. So you make your profiles, you set everything up, and you have to start bidding on projects on Upwork and People Per Hour. People are posting projects and they want very cheap labor. Usually startups are going to be looking for cheap labor because they can't afford to go out and spend $100,000 on a mobile application. And hundreds of people are applying to each listing. So it's very competitive. That's where you need to separate yourself. You need to stand out so that you can win the project. What made me different is I speak fluent English and I was willing to give my clients a constant line of communication. I would give them my cell phone and my email and I said you could call and text me whenever you want and we could hop on video chat and talk about making changes at any time. And that right there is a huge advantage over 99% of the people you'll be competing with. So what I would do is I would pitch myself. I write a few paragraphs out. I talk about my past accomplishments, qualifications, and how I'm just passionate about programming and I like to do quality work and I like to have good relationships with people. And then in the final paragraph, I talk about communication, how important it is to me and how that's the difference between me and my competition. And if they would just give me 10 to 15 minutes on video chat, we could talk through everything and see if it was a good fit for the both of us. Now imagine if you were on the other end of that application. If it's thoughtful, compelling, and very different from the rest of the applications, you might give me a chance. It's just a 10 to 15 minute video chat. And during that video chat, I'll explain to you how it's worth it to go with me. And I convince them simply because I care about what I do and I care about my reputation. And if you're confident enough in that video chat and you're presentable, then they're gonna give you a chance. So to summarize, what you do is you write a compelling, 
application for these job listings and just ask to get on video chat. And you spam that to all of the projects that have potential. Potential meaning it looks like you could get paid a good amount to do the work and the work looks interesting to you. Now there are some horrible project listings, right? People that don't have that much money, that have these ideas that they think are going to be big software hits and make them a ton of money, and all they have to do is go to Upwork and People Per Hour. Uh, you want to avoid those. You want to find a professional looking project. So now what if they want to move forward with you for the project, but it doesn't pay exactly what you want? I struggled with this at first because I went from making $40 an hour to freelancing and I didn't want to make less than that. Otherwise, I would just stay in industry. So I made sure that I was making more than that. I would talk through in detail the projects, whether it's a $5,000 project, a $500 project, or a $20,000 project. You need to consider how much it would cost for this software to be built by any team of professionals. And you could certainly undercut that price, but you wanna keep that value in mind so that you can explain it to whoever listed this project. You could walk through this project in detail with your client and you could explain how they're not going to get this built in good quality somewhere for the price that you're giving them. Don't ever be afraid to ask for more because if they don't like it, you'll be able to tell and then go down. So kind of feel the client out. Remember, this is negotiating. There are, like I said, a lot of wealthy people that just need software built for their online businesses. These people are willing to pay more for a good quality product. So walk through, talk about how you'll make a contract, if it's long term, of course, where you have milestones. And for each milestone, you'll get a payment. You don't wanna get paid after one or two months and have everything fall apart and not get any money. Some clients, if you're not business savvy, will take advantage of you and try to get more work out of you for free. So make sure you have a section in the contract where you talk about extra work. And if extra features need to be implemented, the client will have to pay you more. Now don't go overboard with this. If they need small changes, you should be willing to do these for free to keep the good relationship with the client because they might come back later for future work or they might recommend you to others, like their friends. Over time, as you build projects, you'll also build a portfolio, which you should keep a website for. Your profiles will grow on these websites. You'll have five-star ratings, good feedback, hopefully, and you'll be able to set up your Fiverr account and you should be able to make a living. So why don't I make a living doing freelancing? Well, I did it for a while and I didn't end up enjoying it as much as I thought I would. It turns out a huge portion of this is business with marketing and sales, negotiating. You do almost as much emails and calls as you do programming. So if you're not business savvy and you're not good at communicating, that might be a major reason why you're not successful with freelance programming. But if you do enjoy business, self-employment, going around from project to project, kind of just working on tons of different things at once, freelance programming might be for you. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit about freelance programming from this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and thank you once again, Privacy, for sponsoring this video. There are so many websites these days that I can't even figure out which ones are reputable. I always find good deals, but I'm worried about entering my credit card information because it could easily be stolen. That's where privacy.com helps me out. The way it works is it hides your credit card number. It creates a virtual card number that is locked to whichever merchant you're shopping at. So even if the merchant gets hacked, they won't be able to take your credit card number and use it somewhere else. And if they try, you'll actually get a push notification so that you're always informed and you can cancel your card immediately. The cards are extremely easy to set up. All you need is an account and then you link your cards to your banking information. My favorite part is that they have a browser extension that autofills your information when you're making a purchase to help you save time. Privacy is PCI DSS compliant and they use military grade encryption to secure your information. They also offer two-factor authentication. And since they make money from merchants, there's no cost to you. It's completely free to use. And if you go to privacy.com slash Nick White, you're going to get five bucks for free. That's privacy.com slash Nick White linked in the description and you get 
free five bucks. So yeah, go get that. 